Let's talk about leadership. Our world has many beautiful blessings of success, prosperity, but we also have plenty problems. In my lifetime, I think this is the most polarized society I have seen. There are battles raging, especially in the area of values, personal values, a moral compass, much, much to be desired. So where are our leaders? In human history, leadership, true leadership, was always there in order to help guide, to help build confidence, to empower, to offer direction, to help us find our inner resources. Today, there's a tremendous lack, particularly in that area. Now, each of us has plenty of resources within us, but the fact of the matter remains, due to our subjective lives and the different pressures and expectations and demands on us, sometimes difficult to look out of the quicksand and see the bigger picture. That's why we turn to leaders. Why are our leaders failing us is the topic of this discussion. Please join me. And let's see what we can do about it. Hi, this is Simon Jacobson, and we will be speaking about why are our leaders failing us. This program is dedicated by Dina Rachel Fisher in loving memory of her father, John Jack Fisher. Throughout history, we read about many, many different leaders. Obviously, there are plenty of leaders that we uh, abhor and despise and look at as only bringing destruction and corruption. But we also see those perhaps rarer leaders that shined, rose to the occasion, offered direction, vision, guidance, empowerment to people and actually changed the world in some way or another. Here we're living in 2024. Where are our leaders? Do we have leaders? And why are these leaders failing us, so-called leaders? I look around, listening to many people, taking the pulse of our times, and this is one of the biggest vacuums that exist. To the point that many have turned cynical and simply say, what leaders? They're just as corrupt as everyone else. And then when you look at what's going on in the media, the partisan politics, the entertainment elements, the sensationalism, it's like one big circus. I wish I could say that because that would make it only funny, but it's actually quite tragic. We have many challenges in our lives today. And above all, in the area of moral clarity and vision. And I'm not discussing now any particular politics or any uh, party or partisan perspectives. I'm talking about something that we all share, and that is the human condition. We all want to find some happiness in our lives, contentment, fulfillment, love, we want our families to be intact. We want to be able to make ends meet, be successful. I understand that's a big word that many people determine, define it in different ways. But still, there are things that we share. We all cry when we're in pain. 
and we laugh and we're in joy. Our common denominators are much deeper and greater than our differences. And yet, we don't seem to be able to tap into that intrinsic connection, intrinsic unity. Good leaders are able to do that. They're able to bring together people of diverse opinions. But able to touch something that is more than the sum of the parts. And on the contrary, if you can tell me someone, a leader in any field, in business, in politics, in government, in academia, in entertainment, in sports, all the industries out there that offers that type of approach, I would love to hear about it. So some say every generation gets what it deserves. Since people are lost, so they have no leaders. It's like the blind leading the blind. Is that a sufficient answer? I personally have always believed that we have to look at ourselves to be leaders. But the fact that remains, as much as we have our own resources, we are subjective. And we are sometimes blinded by the immediate needs and demands on our lives. And that's why we need like a conductor of the orchestra. Not to replace us, but to help us sometimes rise above the fray. Help us understand what is really important, what are the priorities. Today, not just in the United States, in Europe, across the world, it sounds to me it's power grabbing, control, pandering. And again, I challenge myself and I challenge you to think of someone that's offering a vision that's more than something driven by self interest. Now, there are those that mouth slogans and have the gift of gab and are able to, I guess, manipulate. And they may even have some good ideas as well. I'm not suggesting otherwise. I mean, there are plenty of very successful and important industries that are leading the charge in technology and medicine and other fields that are making the human condition better. No question about it. Their drive may be driven by profit, but if it's a profit that comes from a product or a service that's helping human beings, so be it. But in most cases, they're focused on their particular industry. Whether it's the industry of losing weight, or the industry of developing AI, or the industry of making people's lives a little easier, so cumulatively, it's definitely, we're living in, to plagiarize Charles Dickens in the, <coughs> the best of times. I can't say the worst of times, but the best of times in many ways, there's no doubt about it. So let's make this clear, that this is not taking for granted the blessings that we have. But we're looking for something more. I mean, take AI, a good example I mentioned. You see how many articles are written about it. How much money is being invested in it. Like the, hot, the hottest item. The big questions of the future, is it going to bring an apocalypse or will it bring redemption? You don't hear leaders talk about. Yes, there are those that are determining whether they should invest in it or not invest in it. And I'm sure many are using it to help improve mankind and our lives. But a president of the United States, for example, shouldn't he be giving a talk about this? And I don't just mean AI, I mean in general. You just don't hear it. You hear things that are generally on the defense. I mean, I'm not even discussing latest news. Or about putting out immediate fires. But not that vision, the vision that human beings so crave for. Someone that you listen to and say, wow, we're all in this together. Let's take on the world. 
I have a unique mission that I, that I need to fulfill. Now, I know you can make the argument that we've always had a lack of true leaders of that nature. Maybe. But we're here now, and we're going to be able to talk about it. So that's what we're doing. Now, I'll tell you why this comes up, particularly right literally today. Though this is really, I would say, a timeless conversation. Because today is the 30th anniversary of the passing of my great leader and mentor, the Rebbe, as he was known. In my book, Torah Meaning for Life, The Wisdom of the Rebbe. So he was a true leader, a true spiritual visionary. The focus was not about putting out fires, administration, and fundraising. It was about offering an individual a vision for life and hope and practical guidance of how to live up to your calling consistently in the hundreds, thousands of hours that I sat and listened to him this is what what, what, what pierced what uh, was imbued me with who I am today. And the same for thousands of others. I have shared this many times in these programs. I've shared, of course, in the book Toward a Meaning for Life. So that's why I'm thinking about this, and that's why I'm bringing it up, and that's why we're discussing it. But the point is not to discuss about this man. We're discussing it about our lives today. For me, he continues to lead and not just as a nostalgic memory, but lives within me, that which I was inspired to do, my own mission, that which drives me. That's ultimately the ultimate litmus test of a true leader, that even when he's not here physically, continues to inspire. But not inspire in a way where you're like a child and you need a crutch. It's on the contrary. It's an empowerment thing. You feel you can live up and stand on your feet. Like a good teacher, what's the ultimate compliment to a good teacher? That he produced a student that can be a teacher in his own right without his teacher there to tell him what to say. He taught him how to think, not what to, just what to think. A methodology. So it th- makes me think a lot about my work. And I extend that to each of you that we are here not just to be takers, but to be givers. That we can make a difference. That each of us has a unique divine soul within you, beating within you, with enormous potential. Much of it yet to be unleashed. And that's not a critique. That's the way life works. You're born a newborn child with enormous, infinite potential. How much of it will actually be actualized? Depends on many factors. Depends on growing up in a nurturing home that nurtures and draws out and builds the confidence in that child as the child grows into adult to be able to spread his or her wings. It depends on different opportunities that come our way. And it depends, yes, on meeting the mentor, the leader, the coach, the guide, the, the friend, even the stranger that inspires. And of course, it, it, it requires your commitment and going for it, owning your life, seizing the day, and having that sense of purpose, that sense of urgency. But even with all of that, actualizing potential is a lifetime journey. We always have more potential. That's the definition of potential. So maybe in the physical realm, there's a certain amount. You exercise, you condition yourself, and you'll be able to run not quicker than a certain amount or lift a weight not more than a certain weight. But that's in the physical realm. In the spiritual, psychological, emotional realm, it's endless. I'm not going to say it's actual infinity, but is definitely more and more to actualize. 
And that's where the leader comes into play. Someone that coaches us, that guides, that above all pushes us in a good way. You see a good coach kicks you in the pants out of love to bring out the best in each one of us. So why are our leaders failing us? My immediate answer for that is because we have no leaders. Or even the ones that are capable of being, we're never trained to think like this. And they've become essentially mercenaries, opportunists, some with better intentions than others. And if you yourself don't have that type of strong fortitude and clarity, obviously you're not going to lead others in that direction. Why are our leaders failing us? Many of the people that should be leaders don't even want to go there. Too dirty, too corrupt. Too many compromises you have to make with your life. I know people, unsung heroes, that would be excellent leaders. They quietly live out with their lives. They're leaders in a quiet way to a few individuals, their families, communities. So it's not a climate when you look around what's going on in the world of, let's say, academia that's supposed to be producing leaders. And instead, what dominates the headlines? You tell me. Anger, violence, protests. I'm not even getting to what caused not what, but all personal interest, self-interest, and in many cases, hate interests. So what, you're going to have a place like that cultivate leadership? Leadership has to be above all of that. Not just not be hateful, but to teach people how to love, to coexist, to cooperate with each other, to figure out how we can make this world a better place together. Instead, it's about pointing fingers and accusing. I don't want to digress. So we'll soon talk about what we can do about it. But let's first identify the problem. And it's not difficult to recognize. It really comes down to whether you and I feel empowered, driven, motivated, and excited about fulfilling my calling in this world, your calling in this world. It's a yes or no question. You know, in presidential campaigns, they always say, well, you, are you better four years than you were four years ago? It's a classic line to try to get you to vote for them. I would pose the question, not whether you're better off. Do you feel that in sense of urgency, that sense of calling, that sense of mission? So what do we do about it? Now that we know and we've identified the problem, what do we do about it? We become leaders ourselves and as a result, we demand and expect from all those around us to be leaders. So let me explain what that means. The difference between a leader and a follower is uh, quite simple. A follower is driven by looking to others for direction. That can come from insecurity. It can come from fear of failure. It can come from just laziness. Well, she's easier. Tell me what to do, and that's that. Many people do have that mentality, except, of course, when something's really important to them. You give something driven by self-interest, pleasure, money, and so on. Then there's more motivation. Also not always enough. One of the key ways to become a leader instead of a follower is to recognize that you have a soul inside you. And that soul is yours and yours alone. Someone else's soul is not going to tell you what to do. They can help educate you, inspire you. But the more, conf- the more, soul, the more connected to your soul, the more confidence you have. Because you start recognizing, this is my calling. This is what I need to be doing. So yes, it would be nice to say that we could find that type of inspiration from a leader, a mentor, a teacher, an educator, a parent. But in case you don't have that, the good news is there's information out there. There are many ways that you can discover who you are. 
I mean, one of the focuses of many of my classes is exactly that. Discovering your personal mission. I've even did a course on that. So the first step is to uncover the leader within yourself. And that doesn't have to be on a big level. You don't have to run for president. It begins in small ways, that every day you do something that you initiate. That's what leaders do. They initiate. They don't react. They, they're proactive. Initiating could come down to every morning sending out an email or a social media post of a beautiful, heartwarming thought and feeling to your list. Growing that list. Sharing something that came your way, but you initiated it. Initiating could be taking a few minutes each day and go visiting someone in a hospital or a special child or calling someone an elder parent or elder relative or a stranger for that matter. Initiating is giving some charity every day. And overall, I would say in the cognitive, emotional, and behavioral realms, doing something different with your mind, initiating, reading something, thinking about something, stimulating your mind with a new spiritual idea. Emotionally, can be a song, a prayer, a psalm, a feeling. And behaviorally, as I just described, examples. Something that you actually do. Initiate. Even small things. Do them step by step, and consistently, they become big things. And I'm not measuring it in size or in so on, but I'm measuring in them in impact. You become a leader by initiating. And when you initiate, I assure you that other people around you will be initiating as well. Initiation breeds initiation. It's contagious. Think of the impact it has on your family. When your children see that, they learn by example, by osmosis. You don't even have to tell them. Obviously, encouraging people to initiate good things is always great. They'll say, how's that going to change the world? Well, firstly, it changes your own world. Secondly, the more of us that are do that, it creates a climate. It has an effect. We know today about the butterfly effect in physics. Even a little energy generated in one corner of the world ultimately impacts the entire world. Example there, the butterfly wings. The butterfly effect, as it's called. A butterfly flutters, flutters its wings in Kansas City and it can create a typhoon in Singapore. So the same thing is with our deeds. And especially with, our, with the world in which we live where we know how much is driven by internal energies and forces beneath the scenes shouldn't surprise us at all. And when that climate changes, who knows? Maybe a leader does emerge. It ultimately impacts. So this is like from the bottom up. It'd be nice to think from the top down where we could have a committee and a brain trust and establish this, let's appoint a leader. But as I said, that doesn't seem to be working very well. So we can't just wait for that. So there's another approach. It's called the grassroots approach. Now each of us does what we can do in that realm. And maybe it maybe seemed quicker to go from the top down, but sometimes something is more sustained from the bottom up. And again, we're looking for empowering ourselves. So bottom line, my friends, is you have a leader within you. So instead of just bemoaning the fact and, and lifting up our hands in desperation, hey, there are no leaders, which we can do, but let's be action-oriented. Let's do something about it. Initiate. Become a leader in your own right. In the words of Maimonides, we have to look at the world as equally balanced, like equal scales. Let's say 4 billion people on one scale, another 4 billion on this scale. And your one good deed and good word and good thought tips the scales, as he puts it, to personal and global redemption. Tips the scales. 
But it all comes back down to the fact that you matter and that you have a unique mission and calling in your life. I was blessed that I heard this message in my young, impressionable years, and it affected me. Some of us may not have heard that, so you're hearing it now. But more importantly, you have to share it with others. Let others hear it. Let your children hear it. Let your families hear it. Let your coworkers hear it. You have a unique calling, a song inside you. Don't let it remain trapped, remain sealed, remain silent. Learn about your song. Develop the courage and confidence to sing it. Make that difference. And I say it on a very personal note of gratitude and debt to my teacher, who I see the ultimate quintessential leader, spiritual visionary, that was not about himself, but about helping empower others to find their calling and to use it to spiritualize their corner of the world. I remember an article reading an article in New Jersey. What was the main newspaper in New Jersey? I forgot. It was a holiday uh, in December. So they had, had a holiday article about a philanthropist who was anonymous. Later I met him, the owner of a bank, not Jewish, and he says that he's reading a book called Toward a Meaningful Life, The Wisdom of the Reb. And he circles and underlines a particular passage that each of us is given a corner of the world to spiritualize and turn into a divine home. That's what he lives with. And this is a very well-read, educated man. He had given then a big gift for children and he was asked what motivated him. Couldn't put it in a better way. Each of us, each of you, each person is given a corner of the world to spiritualize and turn into a divine home. And we do that by initiating. We do that by allowing our better angels, the goodness within us, to shine forth, to be, illumin to be an illuminating and warming force that whoever comes your way, you could say that after they leave your presence, feel brighter, feel warmer than before they met you. That's an interesting way of looking at it. That whoever you meet feels uplifted. You do that, you are becoming a leader in your own right. And as I said, that does create and changes the environment because the more we do that, the more that becomes the standard. So instead of just watching others and watching the media in all platforms and formats, watching others, watch others, watch others, which is all about the herd mentality of just following, following, initiate, do things that you are driving, and you'll see the difference that it makes. So... I don't want to end on a negative note. Why are our leaders failing us? I mentioned many of the reasons, some of the reasons. There are probably more. But to come away with, so what did we learn from that? Three types of people. People who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who ask what happened. Make things happen. You have the power to do so. I, Simon Jacobson, my organization, Meaningful Life Center, our wonderful team are committed to help in every possible way in that regard. Check us out at MeaningfulLife.com. Many resources that you can access. Please share it. Please subscribe to our offerings. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, love to hear your thoughts, your feedback, your comments. Thank you so much and be blessed and be the leader you deserve to be and the world deserves. Be well.
This program is brought to you by the Meaningful Life Center. Please help us continue our programs. Make even a small contribution at MeaningfulLife.com slash donate.